Hey there, Amy394. So one of the requests I got while I was away in Las Vegas was to uh, take a look at one of the assignments or one of the projects that we did in class um, and to make a video walkthrough of that because it was something that um, one of the students in the course thought would be really useful for us to come back to. And so I want to go ahead and respect that um, because I think that's true. I think this might be a, a useful kind of um, technique to use. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that replicator technique that we did in class. So I'm going to start in a new network. I went ahead and deleted that project uh, to get us started. I'm going to add a new container um, to get us going here. And this first container, I wanted to have a width of um, 600 by 600. I'm just making a square out of this guy. All right, we're going to dive inside here. And then right out the bat, I'm going to start with a container. So I'm going to add a container here. And then I also am going to need a table. Um, like some of you should remember at this point, we started with a table. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and find a file to put in this, which is this picture index file. Uh, and we need, to, we need to pulse this to pull that information up. Great. So we're going to use all of these links uh, and these names here inside of this table to make something that we can make lots of copies of. And to do that, uh, we're going to use replication as a kind of method for that. Um, and the kind of ingredients that go into replicating are we need a table that we're going to pull information from. And then we need something that we can copy, right? We need something that we can instance uh, multiple times as we're making replicants. Cool. With that said, um, let's get started here. All right, so this container, I'm going to go ahead and make it 200 by 200 to get started. There's some things I already know about it that I'm going to do early on uh, to try and save some uh, work along the way. On the panel page here, I'm going to go ahead and say null 1 is the background top for this particular container. I know that I want to make it a clone of itself. That will be useful here in a little bit. Uh, and I want its alignment order, of course, to be its digits, me.digits. I think those are all the things I know about it in this particular moment. All right, so let's go ahead and dive inside of here. And the next thing I want to do is I want to grab a movie file in or a movie in for you, uh, those of you that are still using a couple versions of Touch Center Go uh, that haven't updated, all the computers in the lab, that is. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to rely on me.digits um, and a little bit of scripting to be able to populate this particular um, video right here, right? Like the thing that goes in this space, I want it to correspond to something in a row over here. I want to grab this link, and I want to use that to actually open something here. So in order to do that, uh, we just need to write a little bit of an expression to make that happen. So I'm going to look for the operator that's one level above me called table1. And we can go ahead and let's double check. That's, that's true. That's table1. And you know what? Before we move, get too far along here, let's go ahead and add a null. We'll actually we'll pull out of this null instead of out of this table, um, just in case we need to make any changes. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at null one instead. And out of null one, I need to know the row and the column. And the row I want to be my parents digits me dot parent dot digits. I'm going to subtract 1 from that because my parents' digits are 1. We can see right here, container 1. And I want to start at row 0. And then finally, I want to look in row 1 here. And we should, lo and behold, see that come up right there. So let's pull apart that expression real fast just to make sure that we understand it. So let's go ahead and split our view here, and we'll move up one layer. And if we look here, we can see that sure enough, what I'm asking for is in null 1, I want to have the thing that comes out of my parents' digits 1. I'm going to subtract 1 from that, because I don't want the 1 row, I want the 0 row. And then I want the 1 column. Perfect. OK. So let's do a few other things here before we move too far along. I'm going to go ahead and connect this to a null. We know that's the thing that's going to be connected to the out for this. Um, let's see here. I think I also did one of these. Um, let's go ahead and put in, uh, we're going to branch this. Yoink. So I can middle mouse click. Uh, and let's do another thing here. Uh, that should just be another null, I think. 
And I think that what we did is we called this disp. Yes, now I'm remem remembering. That's true. Okay. And then while we're here, let's go ahead and add a text top. Uh, and let's grab the text that corresponds to this guy, right? So we can do the similar kind of, similar kind of thing here for that. I'm going to split my view. We'll zoom out here. I'm going to go ahead and assign this as the dat that I'm pulling from. I'm going to get rid of this text here. And I want the row to correspond to me.parent dot digits minus one again. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and take a look here. I like the resolution of this guy um, to, well, actually what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of different kinds of these things, right? Um, so what I would like to do is I'd like to make sure that the resolution of, oops, I'm in the wrong container. There we go. This guy's resolution of 200 by 200. Um, let's go ahead and, um, well, you know what? I take that back. Let's do this instead. Let's make sure that we draw this text guy at the actual resolution that the original file's at. And if we middle mouse click on this guy, we can see this is by, at 640 by 640. So let's use another expression to grab that. So for resolution, I'm going to ask for, well, and you know what? While we're here, let's simplify this name just a little bit. We'll call this photo because that'll make the expression a lot easier to write. So I'm going to ask for the operator that's called photo. And out of photo, I want to grab width. And let's do the same thing for height. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and set this to have a font size. Uh, that looks pretty good. Mm, let's go down. Let's make it like 70. 70 is probably safe because some of these things are a little bit longer. I can also see uh, right out the gate. Um, well, let's, let's do a few things here first. Let's go ahead and insert a composite. And we'll uh, add the wires here to it. And we're going to do add. Excellent. And we can see uh, right away, right, that this is mm, almost what we want, but not totally what we want. Because what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and give this a little bit of background color. Maybe like that. Yeah. And instead of adding, I want to do over. I need to switch the order of these. There we go. We can even put this on top of it. It helps us kind of stay visually organized better. Um, but I don't want all of this black to show up all the way around there. So let's go ahead and instead of pulling the whole height, let's do maybe just like 200 instead. Now, that does a funny thing, right? It stretches the thing over here in our composite. We can fix that if we go to our composite. And under the transform page, let's go ahead and set this. Uh, we'll leave it at input 2 as the fixed layer. Perfect. And what I want to do is instead of um, this prefit overlay of fill, I want to go ahead and set this to native resolution. And now what this does is it's going to put wires here right on top of this guy, right on top of our photo, at the actual resolution instead of trying to stretch it to make it to fit. Sometimes we want it to stretch to fit um, because that looks better, and sometimes we don't want that. In this case, I do not want that to happen. Okay, so what else do I need to do here? I can see that I probably should make this mm, maybe a skosh narrower. There we go. And then here in the composite, I'm going to use the translate to actually change where that sits. right? Because I'd actually like it to be closer to there. Good. And looking at where the text is here, I also want to just take that and move the text up just a skosh. Oops. Because I like it to be feel a little more centered. Great. All right, that's getting pretty close to what I want. Now, I know there are a couple other things that I want to do, right? Um, one of the things that I know is going to happen is I need to insert a level top here. And I know that because um, what we're making, right, what I'm after is I want to have this container so that when I mouse over the top of it, it brightens up. And when I'm not mouse over the top of it, it's a little bit uh, dimmer. And so I'm going to do that by controlling the transparency. So let's go ahead and add a panel chop. 
And out of the panel chop, what I want to know, right, is I want to know this. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here and open up this guy. And we can see that when I moused over, rollover turns on. This guy right here is going to bounce to 1 when I'm on over the top of it. And when I'm not moused on it, it goes to 0. So I want to take advantage of that. So out of this select, I'm just going to ask for rollover. Great. And then I'm going to do a few operations to that to get it to what I want it to be. I'm going to add a null to the end. So that way we can keep inserting changes to this so we can kind of fine tune the kind of look and feel that we want. All right. Let's go ahead and associate roll over here, right, with our opacity. That's where we're up to eventually. We can do a relative reference. We can see that it disappeared. That's great. So now we've got this hard cut on and off, right? Bump, 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 bump. Okay, still not totally what I want, so I need to make some more changes. We might start by adding a filter to our chain here. And a filter is going to give us a little bit of an ease in, ease out kind of feeling, right? It kind of ramps in and ramps out. That's a little too slow, so I'm going to change the width of that down to maybe like 0.25. Still a little too slow, 0.15. Fump, fump. Mm, maybe 0.2 is closer to what I want. Yeah. And the other thing I'm noticing is that I've got this kind of all the way on and all the way off, and I don't want it to totally do that. I want it to always be on a little bit. So I'm going to use some math to make a change here to that. With my math chop, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the range of 0 to 1, right? What's coming out of here, 0 to 1. I want it to instead be 0 0.5 to 1. So it's always halfway on. Great. All right, so I've got a pretty good looking chop network here and a top network. And we can see they've got two things going on here. Right, I've got this uh, display that doesn't have any changes to it, and then I have this thing called uh, null one, which is actually uh, what's set to the background of this uh, container, and that's got the label on it. Okay, let's for a moment back out here and see how we can start to take advantage of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the comps tab, and I'm going to grab a replicator. Like we talked about before, replicators allow us to use what's in a table and a master operator to make copies of something. So I'm going to go ahead and position this here. I've got this kind of like crosshair here in my network. And replicants by default start here and propagate to the right. So I'm going to just kind of position things over here on the left to make it a little bit tidier. OK. So to start off, I'm going to use null 1. Whoops. I'm going to drag that onto my replicator. And I'm going to tell uh, my replicator that's my template dat. I'm going to grab my container. And I'm going to tell it that it's the master operator. And what we, we should see happen is we should see a bunch of copies be made for every row. Excellent. And bada bing, bada boom. Looking good. Now, you'll remember that when we started out here, we made sure that this was a clone of itself, which means every single one of these replicants is also a clone of our first container. And that's handy because it means that we can start to make changes inside of this container and it's going to propagate to the rest of these guys. And we'll see why that's important here now pretty soon. Okay, so let's back out here for one second. Everything's stacked on top of each other, which we don't like. So let's go ahead in here and let's set our line, or excuse me, uh, our alignment, that's correct, to be left to right. And while we're at it, um, let's set this to have a maximum of three per line. And now we've got this duplicate here. What's going on? We've got to fix that. To fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to come here to container one. And we're going to go ahead and in the panel, we're going to set its display to off. Now, if we were to, for any reason, need to re-replicate all of these, right? If we hit the uh, replicate, the create button all over again, that property the display off is going to propagate to all of the replicants, and then we won't see anything here inside of our container. So uh, an important thing to know is that depending on how your replicating is set up, you either have to be very careful about when you turn some of those things on and off, uh, or you need to write a little script to make sure that you can fix some of that. And we didn't talk about that in class, and we've got different versions going on in class, and so I'm not going to demonstrate that in this example. I just want to make sure that that's in your brains. 
Okay, great. So now let's back out here for a second and let's make this viewer active. And we can see that when we mouse over it, sure enough, yeah, it's looking good. Um, these guys light up. Okay, so what is it that I want, right? This isn't totally what I want yet because what I would like is I'd like to make another container. And this container is also going to have a size of 600 by 600. Right? And better yet, let's make a third container. I know, I'm container city here today. And this container, let's go ahead and call this, uh, mm, well, let's, what, what should we call it? We should give it a great name. Uh, maybe like uh, photo player. Photo selector. Why not? Okay. Right, well, let's plug in both of these guys to photo selector. And I need to give it a width of 1,200 and a height of 600. And I'm going to arrange the things in here from left to right. Because what I'm really after, right, the place that I started that I uh, was hiding is I would like to have an array of buttons over here that are pictures. And when I click on one of those, I would like that then to propagate over here and set this picture to display over here on the right-hand side. That's what we're after. That's what we're making today. Okay, so in this other container, right, so what I did is I went into container 2, and in container 2, let's go ahead and add a select top. So we'll drop down a select, oops, not a shared memory, a select, and we're going to connect that to a null. Perfect. And that should be just about all we need in here. We're going to back out one layer, and in this container, we're going to go ahead and tell it that its background, ah, on the panel page, excuse me, should be null 1. Great, and nothing should show up. That's great, because there's nothing in there yet. All right, so now we're going to write a little bit of, we're going to write a couple scripts to make it so that when we um, click on one of these panels, right, one of these containers, that what will happen is that we'll uh, populate this field with a string that points to the corresponding uh, photo. Okay? Easy peasy. So because all of these guys are clones, we only have to ever do this once, and we're going to do that over here inside of our master. So to do this, we need to grab uh, a panel execute chop, because what we're going to do is we're going to rely on a change in a panel value to make this happen. And in this case, the panel that we're going to, uh, the panel value that we're going to rely on is select. And I just happen to know that. We could also like look at it from the list here. Uh, or we could do this, right? If you weren't sure what the right choice to make was, you could drop in a panel chop. Uh, and you could look kind of examine all the different options. And we could open up our panel. And what is it that I want? So it's select, right? This guy right here. When select fires, that's when I want to run a script. Great. And what's the script that I want to run? Well, the, there's a couple other things that we should pay attention to. So I'm only interested in on to off. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the rest of these because I don't actually need those. And I'm going to make a little more room. So I've got some space to do my uh, scripting over here. Okay. So first things first. This guy over here, display, is the thing that I'm going to want to uh, grab. And more than just display, right, I'm going to want to have the whole pathway to that. I want to know his address in the world. Because if we back out here, if we just look for one second, let's go ahead and split our control panel. And we can kind of do this the hard way, right? We could do this the manual way. We could grab display and drop it on select and tell it the relative path. And we can see this is what we would need to be able to write for that. Okay, so I need to have this dot dot slash look up one layer in the network. Look inside the thing called container one. There's another thing called container one inside of that and find the thing called disp. Which is not totally true, right? Because really what we're after are these guys down here. But that's okay, because uh, we're going to use a little bit of script magic to solve some of that problem. Okay, so first of all, um, when we're looking at this, we might notice that really the only thing we ever need to worry about changing is this information right here, right? This is really the thing that changes. We could also remember, or we could even take a look, that if we grab our evaluate dat here, 
right? And let's look at this. Like if we try out the expression me dot parent dot name, if we ask for our parent's name, lo and behold, that's the thing that we need to have. So we just need to find a very clever way to write a string where this is the only thing that changes. Okay, we should be able to do that. So let's take a look at what that would be, right? Like that would look something like um, and let's call this a string, or instead of calling it string, let's call it target. Not track it, target. Okay, so target is going to be dot dot slash container one, right? So over here, look up one layer, find the thing called container one. Look inside of container one, and next, I want you to grab and we're going to make a space here, right? Well, first let's add a slash because we're going to need that. And then we're going to add plus me.parent.name, my parent's name. And then I want to add to that slash null one. Actually, that's not true. I want to grab disp, display. That's this thing's name, right? Display. Okay. Let's, before we get too far along here, let's test that to see if it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my text port. And what I want to do is I just want to print that. I want to print target. So I should be able to actually see that print out when I click on it. Ah, lo and behold, there it is. All right, container one, container one, disp. And it should be, in fact, if we back out here, and we made this guy viewer active, we should see that that's true. Ah, good, yeah? So this guy is, let's clear this, we'll do it again, right? So that's container one, that's item one disp, good. Texture, container one, item two. Okay, this is working the way that we want it to. So let's do one other thing here. We don't need this print statement anymore. Now, what we're gonna do is let's define uh, this select, so, select, oops, this should be indented. Our select here is going to be the operator that is, let's make sure, one, two layers up, okay. Operator, one, two layers up, in container two, and we want the thing that's called select one. Great. And now I want select, and I want the parameter called top, and I want to make sure that's equal to target. Right, that's what I'm after. And I could, like, I didn't have to necessarily define select here. Like, we could just take this whole thing and put it down here, but this is just a little more tidy. Okay, so it should be that now when we back up here, let's go ahead and close this, but look at the panel for this whole th other thing. Yeah. So now we click on one of these, and it populates this guy over here. Easy peasy. So let's back out. And let's reduce this to just one window. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and view this. And lo and behold, that's looking pretty good. All right. Um, it's jamming. Let's do one last thing. The last thing that we might do here is we might go ahead and take our photo selector and drag that over and drop it on perform and set that to be the operator that works in perform mode. So now, when I hit perform mode, there we go, it opens up just that way. That's just what I want. And last but not least, we could go to our, oh, it should be window placement. We could set it to start in perform mode. And now, whenever we start this up, we won't even render any of the programming environment, we'll only start right here. Great. So that's what we did in class the other day. And yeah, hopefully that will help. 
kind of give you a sense of what's going on here, like looking closely at this again, right? We've got uh, a table with a bunch of information in it. And then um, we've got our wires, or excuse me, we've got our master operator here uh, where we've kind of built a component network. And then that's replicated all across over here. And the great way this is set up, right, is that we could take this uh, and let's just make a, a quick copy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and head to uh, my Flickr page real fast and show you how we might make some changes to this, right? So, like, let's grab a couple of other pictures here. Great. So we've got this one. I'm going to go ahead and view all the sizes for this. Let's find this one. We're going to view all the sizes. Let's view all the sizes. Oh my goodness, this is so painful to watch. Okay, so here in the original size, 600 by 600, I'm going to go ahead and copy the image URL, and I'm going to come over here in table 2. Oops. And I'm going to select all the stuff in here and paste it in. And that looked like it was a picture of Windows. Windows. Great. And let's look at another picture here. Oh, happy, right? Excellent. And let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and view all the sizes of this. I want the original one. I'm going to grab the image URL. I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the rest of these URLs right away so that I don't lose my place. Excellent. All right. What else? What's next here? Okay. Aha. Let's uh, copy the image URL for this one. And this was La Rev, an excellent show. Highly recommend it. It's very shiny, very pretty. Um, let's find another photo, right? Okay, what's in this one? Ooh, this is outside in the lobby. Let's copy the image URL for that. Um, lobby art, excellent. Um, and let's see here. That's only four of them. That's all right. Four is enough for now. That'll help show, demonstrate the point here, right? Because why this is interesting is that if we take table two and we plug that in instead, we're only going to get four replicants, one, two, three, four, uh, with those values in them. And we should, aha, lo and behold, there they go. And these guys have got little error windows that are showing up because we don't have anything in there, right? Um, but presumably we would have two different stacks that we would make that would make sure that we had different uh, full sets of photos in these. We could even do something like this, right? Like we could go ahead and uh, build in a switch. We could connect both of these. Let's make sure they're stacked right, top to bottom. And now I might find a way to think about how I can control this thing to switch between the two different ones, right? So then I could have lots of different uh, photos set up in here that I could kind of toggle between. Okay, anyway, so that's one example for you guys, and hopefully that's helpful.